praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to the Art of the Covenant Ministry number two, Story Time. Where we take an opportunity to bring forth biblically based original stories that shows godly principles lived out. And what a wonderful thing that is. My, 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 my. It is a blessed thing to be here today with all of my covenant keepers, all of my worshipers, all those that are seeking the truth in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that you can hear a lot of our story times, all the ones that we done done thus this far on our YouTube channel which is the ARK, A-R-K, space of, O-F, space the, T-H-E, space covenant, C-O-V-E-N, A-N-T, space ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, space number two. And when you do that, you'll get an opportunity to see our symbol right here, a blue symbol with a hand on top, hand underneath, holding the globe, saying instruments being used by God to reach those that can't reach up. Hallelujah. And we want you to go through our videos. I mean, we got a ton of videos there. There is a plethora of all type of videos, Bible study videos, spiritual exercise spirit, uh, Video. Going through the Bible in 10 videos. We have mental and physical workout. We even have a series on the Song of Solomon. We even got our, our series that we're doing now, which is called You Help Me. And You Help Me Part 2 is there. You Help Me Part 3 is there. And you Help Me Part 4 is this Sunday um, at 11 o'clock. You can see it on YouTube by 1230. Uh, listen, come on and check it out. Let us know what you think about the videos. Let us know how you like the videos or you don't like the videos. Even our Covenant Seekers detective game is there. Go through there and see how it works. Let us know if you want us to bring that game back. Let us know what videos you want us to bring back. It's all type of videos there. So go through them. Take your time. Listen, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Even share the videos to all of your family, your friends, your loved ones, those that work with you, those that go to church with you, your acquaintances, those that you know that don't care for you. Share the videos, the love of Christ Jesus, the teaching of Christ Jesus. And let's get this video up to 15,000 likes and let us get 300 new subscribers today. Oh, what a wonderful thing that we can do. We can do this. So let us look forward to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, here we go with the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two, Story Time. And this is entitled, Even Though You Finish, He Says You're Not. All right, here we go. There once was a man that was a farmer, had been a farmer all of his life. He had a big old spread, I mean a nice size spread, and he had cows and horses and some goats and some chickens. He had all type of stuff on his farm. He even had some employees that helped him on his farm, and he had been doing this all of his life. Matter of fact, it had been passed down, that particular farm has been passed down from his great 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 grandfather to his great great grandfather to his great grandfather to his grandfather and now to him he has raised his children on this farm he had three boys 
and he had raised them boys on that farm. They had been farm workers from the time they was able to walk until now. Each one of them is grown to this day. They are grown young men. And he had worked his farm all of his natural life. Uh, up to the time of today, he, matter of fact, had started when he began to walk. He was chasing behind his father, following him, seeing what he was doing in the barn, seeing what he was doing to the chickens, seeing what he was doing to the cattle as he branded them, as he gave help deliver the calves, as he watched them, as he worked with the horses, how he even gave birth help deliver birth to the ponies. He watched him as he done everything on that farm. And he learned the ins and outs of that farm. He learned how to grow crops. He learned how to take care of animals. He learned how to understand the animals and watch their behavior so you can figure out if they all right today, if they feeling good today, if they even hungry today. He can learn how to take care of the animals, how to get the maximum out of the animals. He even had dogs that he loved. He loved dogs, so he had him a few dogs on there that helped him around the farm. And him and his wife had been on that farm, running that farm for the last 35 years. Now, one morning, it's been something that's been nagging at him for a little while. He began to feel unfulfilled in what he was doing. You see, he began to not get that enthusiasm that he used to have when he woke up and got up that morning just being a farmer, looking in the mirror, shaving his face, knowing that he was a farmer. You know, as he put his clothes on and look over at his, at his wife as she's in the kitchen, preparing breakfast. He was just excited about being a farmer. But now all of a sudden here lately, this enthusiasm is gone. But he's still maintaining his work ethics. He's still doing the things that is needed to be done. He's still going out there at four o'clock in the morning, starting his day and continually to work till six o'clock in the evening. He was continually to do the things that he normally done, but he wasn't having the same feeling about it. You see, he wasn't feeling that he was making a contribution. He wasn't feeling that he was doing the right thing. He wasn't feeling that this is where he belonged. He just kept having this nagging feeling of emptiness within him. He tried to explain it to his wife as he told his wife. He, she said, honey, listen, I don't know what's going on, but I just don't feel right. I just don't understand what was going on. I'm not happy anymore. And the wife thinking that he's not happy in the marriage. And she said, honey, you don't love me anymore. He said, no, I'm not talking about that. I still love you just like I loved you from the first day that I met you. He said, my love has grown from that day to this day. He said, I love you more now than I ever loved you before. She said, then what are you talking about? He said, I just don't understand what's going on. I'm just not happy with, with my life. I, I don't understand it. And he con they continued to try to talk about it. He continued to try to explain it to her. He didn't know where it came from, why it was on him. He didn't understand what was happening to him. But he continued every day doing what he's supposed to do doing how he's supposed to do it, when he was supposed to do it, where he was supposed to do it in, and understand that the farm was a prosperous farm. It was a working farm where it took care of him and his wife financially and his children and all of this. Now, out of his three boys, the, the oldest boy didn't care much for the farming life. 
Even though he did it, he didn't care much for it. It wasn't his thing. See, his oldest boy was a pretty good in athletics through his high school career. He was pretty good at it. Matter of fact, he was so good, got him a scholarship, and he didn't take up nothing about farming, agriculture, or anything like that. He took up being a teacher. But he played in college and everything, and you know, once he graduated from college, got him a master's degree in teaching, he met his wife, and now him and his wife had moved away and moved all the way down to Wisconsin. And he is teaching at the college down there, um, and he is enjoying his life. Now his second son, his second oldest boy, he didn't, really care much about the farm and he did it as he came up but it wasn't the farm that he cared about you see the boy had a knack of growing things but he didn't care much about the growing of things instead of the usage of the things that he grown so he excelled in his schooling work in his science department now he excelled pretty well. He excelled so much it got him a scholarship to college. And he became a scientist, a researcher for a medical company. And, and they was producing di different herbal type medications and, and supplements and all this where he was highly involved in. He met his wife while he was in college. They got married, and he moved all the way to North Dakota, him and his wife, to work for a great big medical company. And he is enjoying his life. Now, his last boy, he's still with him on the farm. He's still there with him. Matter of fact, his last boy is in he enjoyed a farming life. He enjoys getting up, beating his daddy up. Matter of fact, his daddy get out there at 4 o'clock. His son is out there at 3 already doing the things that needed to be done. Doing the things how they should be done. Doing the things why they should be done. He up before the workers are up. See, he had a bunkhouse there on the farm where the workers stayed in there. They, they had little houses on the property where those that was married stayed in the little houses. And they, he was up, the sun was up before all of them was out there. He was out there already starting the day, letting loose the animals and feeding the animals and all this type of stuff, checking the animals, making sure they physically all right, making sure that they mentally prepared for the day that's a hand. And he was just a loving farming life. He was the first one out there and the last one to leave. I mean, he enjoyed farming. He enjoyed being a farmer. He enjoyed the planting and the harvesting. He enjoyed the raising of the animals. He enjoyed the working mechanism of a farm. He just enjoyed it. Now, he, his father, every day, still doing what he normally do every day is not getting the fulfillment from it that he used to have. He's not getting that stuff, that, that, that feeling in his gut where he was satisfied with what he was doing. He's steady telling his wife about it. He's steady thinking about it in his mind. One day he goes out to the south field and out on the south field one of his workers named Pedro he was out there and Pedro was mending the fence and fixing the fence and all this type of stuff and carrying on. And as he was seeing him coming, Pedro stopped because he thought maybe he had something else for him to do. He, he asked him, uh, boss, what's wrong? He said, nothing, Pedro. I'm just walking. I'm just... Uh, just looking and walking, that's all, because he wouldn't ride in his horse. He was walking the horse. And Pedro said, well, you, you, you look kind of worried there. What's wrong? He said, I don't know. He said, I, I'm just having this all not fulfilling uh, in, in my gut here. I just don't have the same feeling anymore. 
And old Pedro looked at it and he said, well, you're feeling unsatisfied. Is that what it is? Are you feeling like you're not contributing anymore? Do you feel like there it is not the right idea or not the right place that you're in right now? Are you feeling that what you're doing is not what you're supposed to be doing? He said, you know, that's the way I feel, Pedro. That's how I'm feeling, Pedro. He said, boss, you got to understand that some things are seasonal, some things are forever, and some things are not even for us. But you know you've been farming all of your life. All of your life you've been farming. She said, yes, I've been farming all of my life. Pedro said, well, boss, let me tell you, what you can do is come with me tonight, and maybe you might be able to make some sense of it. He said, well, where you going, Pedro? He said, tonight I'm going to meet some friends, and we're going to drink some coffee and eat some donuts and just talk. Why don't you come on with us? And he thought about it. He said, well, let me think about it. He walked on back down toward the, the big house in Canon, and when he got home, got down there to the house, he tied up his horse, and he went on in the house, and he sat down for lunch. He ate his lunch, him and his wife talked for a while, and he steadily telling her, I'm not, it's just not in me like it used to be. And she's trying to figure out what it is. She don't know what to do. She's trying to change his diet, give him vitamins. She's trying to do all kind of stuff to lift him back up. But he ended up going back out there working. Old Pedro is over there with the horses now. And he goes over there where Pedro is. He said, well, listen, what time is this thing that you're going to with your friends? He said, now you know... I, I don't stop work till 6. He said, you know, I don't stop till 6, but I've got to go home. I'm going to eat, and I'm going to change my clothes, and we usually get together around about 8 o'clock. It, it, it's over with around about 9.30, so come on. He said, all right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to join you this time. So he went on, told his wife what he was going to do. His wife fed him his dinner. He changed his overalls into another pair of overalls, put on a nice shirt, stuck on a, a tie, and looked at his wife and said, How I look, wife? She said, You look fine. Go in and enjoy yourself. So him and Pedro got in the car, and Pedro showed him where to go, and right there they come up to a great big house. Now this is a house in a town next over, but it's a house of another farmer. A farmer that's got a pretty nice spread like him. And they knocks on the door and pretty soon a young man come to the door. He say, hey, Petro. He said, hey. He said, this, this is Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson is coming in to join us. This is his first time. They said, well, come on in. They said, Mr. Johnson, he said, uh, he said, uh, well, call me Ted. He said, okay, Ted, come on, Ted. And Ted came on in, and Petra and Ted come on in into the house. And when they come on in to the house, the, the big living room of the house is set up as if it's a small miniature church. But it was a big room. So it had about 50 seats in there, had a podium, had a big old screen up there and all this kind of stuff. And it, it was about 35, 45 people already there. And he noticed that every one of them was a man. It wasn't a woman nowhere anywhere. All men that was there. And pretty soon the owner come on down the stairs from the top and he come on down with his wife. His wife kissed him and she went on out the door and he come on in. His name was Mike, you see. Old Mike saw Ted and they spoke to one another. He told Ted, he told Mike where, where he was from and what he did that he had that big farm in such and such a county over there. And he said, oh yeah, the next town. He said, I know that farm. He said, I see it all the time. And old Ted and him talked for a little bit and then got around to about 8.20 and all of them start taking their seats and old 
Mike went up to the top, uh, up there to the front, t to the podium, and they began to have what they called a destiny men's group. Now, this destiny men's group was geared to help men in all type of situations to fulfill their destiny in Christ. They helped them in areas of relationship. They helped them in areas of work. They helped them in areas of life, in areas of financial situations, understanding kingdom mentality, and all of this type of stuff. And today's topic was being fulfilled. Now, Pedro didn't know that that was going to be today's topic, but he was glad that it was because this is exactly what the boss was talking about. And they began to expound on the things that will fulfill a person and how they walk into that fulfillment, how they listen and hear all that. And Ted was amazed because he was talking about the way he feels. But when it got toward the end of the meeting and they began to tell him that a lot of times that you feel this emptiness and this thing is because you're not being led by Christ. You're not being a follower of Jesus Christ. You're not being one that's trained and guided by Jesus Christ. And old Ted sat there and he felt that same way because he didn't know Jesus Christ. He didn't know who he was, what he was, how he was. He knew nothing about church. Only thing he knew was about farming. That's all he ever done. That's all he ever been. That's the only thing he ever wanted to do. So when the invitation came, to have Jesus Christ in their life, it was about four or five hands went up and Brother Ted looked around and saw the hands go up. He heard the man say that they had to believe and take it by faith that Jesus Christ himself was born of a virgin that he lived on this earth, that he died upon the cross, and for the third day he rose again. He got to take it by faith, and you have to turn from your ways and turn toward the ways of Christ Jesus. And he, he told them that once they do that and confess it with their mouth, the Lord will come into their heart and save their soul. And the Holy Ghost and God the Father and God the Son would live in their heart. And they need to start reading their Bibles. And they need to make a public confession with their baptism. And begin to listen to God speak to them on the direction that God wants them to go. Now, Brother Ted Hand didn't go up. He just said and listened to what he told everybody else. They left the meeting. After the meeting was over with, they sat around a minute. He had a cup of coffee. He had a donut. And then they all left. Him and Pedro driving back home. He, look, he looked at Pedro and asked Pedro, do you believe in that stuff? He said, well, Pedro said, well, uh, boss, this is my life. This is the way I live. He said, of course I believe it. Every word of the Bible, I believe every word of it. And I do my best to walk in the ways of Jesus Christ. So they went on home. He got on out the car. Pedro dropped him off. And he, Pedro went on to his little small house he had there. Because Pedro had a wife and a son himself. And when he went into the house, his wife noticed that there was something a little different about him. It was something a little bit different. She asked him, did you enjoy yourself? He said, it was interesting. He said, it was, it was what I needed for right now. It, it, it is interesting. So the next day, he goes over to where the, the cows are again. And there go Pedro. He's over there again because Pedro is nursing one of the, the cows that's going to have a calf. And Pedro keeping close eye on him. And him and Pedro began to talk and he asked Pedro, well, when the next meeting? He said, well, we have it once a week. On Fridays, we have it that Friday at that time, once a week, he said. He said, well, I think I'm going to go with you this Friday. So he went with him that Friday. That topic 
was on how to receive the fulfilling. He come back that, that following Friday, this topic was on how to understand your fulfilling, fulfillment. He come back that, that next Friday, this Friday was understanding your fulfillment. Oh, Lord, he was just being bombarded with how he was feeling and understanding. Now, the next time he went back, a topic was, are you empty? And this hit him right in the heart. And the man began to expound on what it was to be empty. You see, he, he told him that you can have fulfillment in something you was doing for a while, but you was just masking the emptiness. See, you was doing the thing because it satisfied your flesh, but it did not satisfy your soul. You see, he began to expound on how that emptiness would grow and grow and grow until it break free from your flesh. And you would feel that emptiness in what you're doing. But still, you'll do what you're doing, but you don't get the same fulfillment. You don't get the same understanding. You don't get the same enjoyment from it. Because there's a void, an emptiness. And he began to tell them that the only way to feel that void and emptiness is with the man Christ Jesus. Before the man got through speaking, Ted's hand went up. And he asked him, Holy, yes, sir. He said, I need to know this man, Jesus Christ. He said, I need to know him. I got an emptiness inside of me, and I need to know him. They began to expound on the gospel with him, told him about the belief, told him about the turning away from his sins and that he was a sinner. He began to expound to, to Ted about what God meant, what a sinner was, because Ted told him he wasn't no sinner. He don't drink. He don't use drugs. He don't go out chasing women. He don't do, he don't curse. He don't go out fighting with people he said I don't do nothing but a farm and he began to explain to him that there's more to sin than that he said have you ever thought about hating somebody he said have you ever stole a penny in your life he said have you ever told a lie in your life he told him have you ever wanted something that somebody else had and Ted said yeah that's how I got what I got wanting what somebody else had he said, well, that's a sin. That's covetedness. And that breaks your relationship with God. Because God, it can't be around sin. You need to turn away from your ways and turn toward Christ Jesus' ways. Because, see, his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. We need our minds to be renewed by the word of God. And so he finally got the understanding of sin. He finally prayed and confessed his sins and confessed that he wanted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So they end up giving him a Bible that night. All of them was, was talking to him and was glad for him. And some of them prayed for him and prayed with him. And then they asked him, did he want to be baptized? And he didn't understand what baptism was. And they explained it to him. Is this a public confession that you are now walking with Christ? It's a commandment by God to do. And he said, okay. So he got baptized that same night. And now when he go home, his hair is real straight because he got wet. But his wife looked at his face and his whole countenance has changed. Everything about him seemed to be different. He coming in, walking about. Now he continued to go to that meeting for the next six months. And one day he come home from that meeting and he told his wife, she said, he said, honey, I think it's time. She said, you think it's time for what? For old Junior to take over the farm. She said, what? You going to give up farming? He said, no, I ain't going to give up farming. I'm just going to give up this farm. It's, it, it's time. So that next day, 
he went out there and he found old Junior. Old Junior was out there with them horses, training one of them horses, breaking it in because he done got five new horses and he got to break them in and all this stuff and he training them and his father walked over there to the to the area where he was in there with one, walking it around in circles, and he and Junior saw him. He called over the worker and told him, "I'll oh, take this horse. Let me go see what Paul wants." He goes over there. He said, "Paul, you all right?" He said, "Yes, sir." He said, "Junior, it's time for you to move into the big house." He said, "Paul, that's your house." He said, "No, it's your house now. You are in charge of this farm." He said, I'm, I'm, I'm through with this farm. He said, Paul, all you know is farming. He said, all you ever done, all your life was farming. Great, great, great grandpa passed the farm down to great, great grandpa. And he passed it down to great grandpa. And he passed it down to your father. And he passed it down to you. He said, I'm passing it down to you. He said, well, Paul, what you going to do? He said, I'm going to continue to farm. He said, I'm going to continue to plant seed, and I'm going to continue to water them. And I'm going to let God give the increase like he always does. He said, well, what, you going to buy and start a new farm? He said, no, I ain't got to buy and start a new farm. The farmland is already here. He said, all I got to do is, do, is go out there and plant the seed. He said, well, Paul, what seed? What you gonna be growing? What kind of crop you gonna be growing? He said, son, I ain't growing the crop. What I'm doing is planting the seed of Jesus Christ to everybody, everywhere and everybody I know. I'm going to learn how to do this. I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to be a witness for Jesus Christ. His son looked in amazement. He had never heard him talk about Jesus Christ. He said, Paul, Tell me about Jesus Christ. So he told his son about Jesus Christ and what God has done for him. Has God has filled him and closed that void up. Has God has cleansed him and brought him into the body of Christ. He told him how God has blessed him. He told him how he understand that all of this belonged to God. And God allowed him to be a part of it. He, he told him how God has blessed him with his children and his wife and everything. And then his son looked at him, Junior, and said, Paul, I want that Jesus Christ in my life. And he told him what he had to do and invited him to the men's group. Now, for the next two months, all Junior and him and Pedro, every Friday, went to that meeting. And then one Friday, old Ted stood up. He said, well, I know what God wants me to do now. He said, what? He said, he wants me to go out and plant seed. He wants me to be his witness. He wants me on the missionary field. So he loaded up the truck and he went on to college so he could understand the workings and ins and outs of the missionary field. And he ended up way over, way over in the deep part of, of Africa, way over there. And while he was over there, he taught them how to farm, he, he built wells, he taught them all kind of stuff, but he also planted the gospel of Jesus Christ, him and his wife. And they lived in huts. They lived in places where people didn't have no shoes. They didn't have no running water. His wife didn't have the comforts of their home. But more or less, they was the most happiest they had ever been. And they continued to finish doing that type of work for the next 20 five years. They both ended up in New Zealand where old Ted was called home. His wife had his body shipped back to the farm. They had a place on the farm where his great-grandpa was buried, his great-great-grandpa was buried, 
his great grandpa was buried, and now his father was buried there, and now he has a spot. But on his tombstone it wrote, a farmer from day one, a planter and a waterer of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his wife stood there with a tear out of her eye. Her youngest son, Mom, you don't have to cry. She said, son, I'm crying for enjoyment for my husband. Because right now, he's in heaven at the foot of Christ. And I believe he heard, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Well, this is our story for the day. Now we're asking that you share this story. We're asking that right now that you also go and visit our YouTube channel, that you go visit the ARK, A-R-K space, the T-A-G space of O-F space C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T Covenant Space Ministry M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y Space the number 2 You'll see our symbol there Our symbol right here We want you to you hold on to that And remember that symbol there of Hand on top, hand underneath Holding the world Saying instruments being used by God To reach those that can't reach up And why you while you're there, look at all of our different videos. Let us know which ones you like, which ones you don't like. Let us know which ones you want us to bring back. Let us know how you like what we're doing or how you don't like what we're doing or what you want us to, to, to be teaching on. Let us know. And remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Also, remember to share the videos. Remember to send them to your family, your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, your church members, your co-workers, your associates, even those that don't care much for you. Share it to all and let the seed of God be planted everywhere and let you be the seed thrower. All right. Well, it, it's been a great day and Oh, yeah, let me show you my hat today. I've been saving this hat. Look at that. I've been saving that one for y'all. That's a nice hat there. I like that. Three, three, three. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. All right, now. You all have a blessed day. And remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I.